This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you so much. There is a something very different in what that we are doing in uh, it's like a, a new age thing it's a very eye-opening and um, kind of maybe modern thing it's a new wave um, talking about this uh, old and even ancient concepts of faith, belief in one creator, but in the same time trying to find a way to do it from, hello, hi, hi. welcome, hi. trying to find this connection from, uh, from reality of uh, 2019, like who could have thought of uh, such connections to ancient days, to ancient times in such a modern reality that we all spend our life in, no matter who we are and from which religion or background culture we're coming from. Like, People are learning Kabbalah. Okay, what's Kabbalah? What's the story with Kabbalah? Just like as a concept. Kabbalah is an ancient wisdom that's been revealed in different generations, came back to the awareness in different generations. When righteous people of earlier generations were talking Kabbalah, they were scared even to mention those names and they, they would use, uh, like, they would, they would, they would use like stories and tales to explain concepts that are divine and godly. They wouldn't talk like us today about, uh, about holy names and, and they wouldn't mention those th in the earlier generations. Like you wouldn't understand anything. One would say to the other, the cow was standing on the table and some person brought the chair. And like, whoa, you don't know. Like, whole conversations would, would run around this topic that had been discussed on, in like, in the, in the greatest yeshiva. Like, people would talk for years on, like, he really meant that the, the cow, what the cow means. It refers to, like, the, there are four animals in the divine chariot and every one of them has different faces and he referred to the face of the calf of the goat, like the calf and like it, and it was on the table, what means on the table, it can be aside the table and under the table and top of the table, like and, 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 and that was Kabbalah, like and today, like you can, you can, you can like listen to classes of Kabbalah while you're driving to your business, to your office in Manhattan, like on, on SoundCloud, like in traffic, on, on, on the, uh, how you call this, uh, the highway? The, the, uh, the, yeah. what? All of them. The, what? All, all of them. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it, like you, like in reality, you learn Kabbalah while you are 100% inside physicality today. Like you don't need really to be a spiritual person, wearing white, closing your eyes, not eating from Mutzay Shabbat till next Friday. Like you, you don't really need to, to be that holy angel to connect yourself to those things. And, 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 and why isn't it proper that really people will dedicate their lives to those noble and amazing things and concepts and really gonna, gonna sacrifice themselves. It, it is proper, but we're not able to. It's not in our level. It's not our life story. We cannot do that. Because if you're gonna try to do it, like someone else gonna have to, to, to pay your rent, like someone else gonna have to pay your bills and, and no one is planning to, planning to do that. So. You're going to have to keep on working and you're going to have to keep on dealing and managing with reality, with life. And if you also want to learn some stuff, so you're going to find your free time while you're in the highway. You have too many minutes to learn Kabbalah, no problem. So that, if that's your schedule, if that's your reality. But 
the fact that we're doing it like that, that we are connecting ourselves to the Creator in our reality, there is no lacking in it. Because the opposite is the truth. Because from such calamity, from such darkness, from such low place, from a place of complete darkness, that no matter where you look, you can't see anything, Air, you're surrounding 100% from 360 degrees in, 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 in figures and forms and people and opinion and, and ways and options and opportunities and lights and they're shining and closing and opening and doors and people and more and like traffic and like pressure. And from those points, from those places, you reach out to heaven, you connect yourself to the Creator. This is something that no one can can understand. No one can understand the greatness of it. And that was the godly plan from the beginning. Even though that in the beginning you couldn't see that, you couldn't predict that, you couldn't understand that the world will get to that level of the rush hours in the middle of Manhattan. No, no one could, could dream about things like that. No one would imagine that the world will reach to that kind of mess, so much noise, so much traffic, so much opinion, so much, so many outlets of, of information, like, the, no one could think that the world will reach that level to so much tense, to, so much pressure, but the Creator, He knew, and the Creator planned from the beginning, from even before time, for the redemption to take place in the last generation. You don't need to be a genius to understand that. For sure that the redemption is the end of the process. It will, it will be the final moment of, 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 of the process of the world falling into that mess, into that noisy place that we are at right now. The Creator Himself wanted to bring a redemption in that kind of way that it will include everyone. If the redemption would take place 5,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 2,000, 100 years ago, it wouldn't come to this place that we are today totally broken and we're just begging for help and we're just like screaming for salvation. Even 500 years ago, people would still like had their strong self-esteem and their image and everyone thought that he belongs to something. Today, even if you think that you belong to something, you look to the sides, you can't recognize your neighbors. Like you don't know, like I was born into a family and like I'm not sure that I belong to that. Like, it, like your parents and you're not sure that you belong. Like your brothers, like you, you grew up together and you look at him and like, is it my brother? Like, you cannot recognize your own brother, your own sister, that you grew up with her in the same house. Like, 20 years you were best friends, and like, whoa, like, who is it? What's going on? This is how thick and, and, and heavy the darkness is. Something happened in this world that darkness took over completely, that you look at the mirror and you cannot recognize yourself. I remember myself a few years ago, I drove with my brother, and we drove, and like we're talking and chatting, and he's not religious, and for like half an hour we were laughing and talking, whatever, and suddenly I looked at the side mirror, and I saw my reflection, I saw myself, and I can swear to you, I couldn't recognize myself, like I wasn't sure who am I seeing in the mirror, like I, I looked again. It was hard for me to grasp that I was seeing myself, like after being half an hour with my brother, and he's so different than me, and he so reminded me of my old self, of my, the past one that I was, the one that I was like a few years ago, that when I looked, picked in a mirror for a second, I, like, what? oh, like, yeah, it's like crazy, you changed so much, like, yeah, I had to, like, it was a reminder, like sometimes you cannot even recognize yourself. But then something very unique is happening. What that happens is that an inner light is waking up from within and waking us all up with no connection to who we think we are. Like suddenly a person in Nigeria can wake up and look for his Israeli roots and like Brother, what are you talking about? Like, where, where did you wake up from? Like, what, like, and he, and I have friends like those. 
from Nigeria, they're sending me texts and messages and like WhatsApps and they're sending videos of their communities. Like, a, what are you talking about? Where did, do you, yes, we are, and for years and generations and traditions, and they have their ceremonies and they're keeping the holidays and Shabbatot, and he's asking me questions about how to write mezuzot and like, People in Africa, in different states, in different lands, in different areas in the world, and Europe is full with people that are desiring Judaism. And you'll ask them, like, what's your background? I just left the church. Like, that's his background. Like, he left the church. So you're talking to a Christian person that for generations, all of his family are Christian, religious, very strict and strong and like Mormons or whatever. Like, oh, their families are attached to, to a traditional Christ Christianity wisdom. All their grandfathers, all their great-grandparents lived in that church, built that church, established that Christian community. Like, and he went out of church today. Like, and no one forced him, no one talked to him. Like, he suddenly felt that something is wrong and he doesn't relate to it anymore. And he finds Judaism, like, and, and he's not sure that he wants, but he... And something is pulling him. And where is it coming from? Within. It's not that he read a book and that book opened his eyes or that he saw a lecture. That something inner feels for him like that. It's not right. Something is wrong. I need to find myself. And then he looks and talking about different religions and different cultures, but you can look at it in, 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 in many directions, different directions. People that are like business people, that are making money, that are working 24 hours a day, and they have businesses and responsibilities, and they're flying, and suddenly they feel like they're empty, like so, I need a change, like something is wrong in my life, and they start searching. Me, I was a soldier. And it's true that I'm Jewish, and I'm Jewish from birth. But, like, in reality, my life was not related to my Judaism in no way. Like, I was not observant in no aspect of my life. I couldn't care less about it, about my Judaism. Like, I, I was not keeping no one of the halachot, of the Jewish rules. I was not keeping Shabbat, was not eating kasher, kosher food. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And because that I start searching and looking for myself... I found about myself that I am Jewish, but like, it hit me. It, not, it wasn't like part of my agenda, oh look, I'm Jewish, and now I need to check my roots. I didn't care about my roots. I felt that I'm lying to myself, I felt wrong with myself, I felt that I'm doing things against my own spirit, I felt like I'm being, um, um, like, pulled into places that I don't like, like being forced by, like, by society, like friends are calling, hey, let's hang out, let's do things, and I don't want to go, and I'm going. Like, I felt like something is wrong with my life, and I start searching for myself. And when I found some things about myself, some of those things that I found was that I'm Jewish, okay, and then I start thinking about my Judaism, okay, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it reflect in your life? Like, what's the meaning of your Judaism? Okay, what does it mean? And then I start walking with it. I start thinking about it. I start learning. What does it mean to be Jewish? I didn't know. I didn't know and I didn't care. So people out there that are not even Jewish, people that are not even, don't have no memory of, of to which nation they belong, just only a certain language, certain um, look that they have, color of their skin, is connecting them to a certain community, to a certain piece of land somewhere like, okay, I'm an African, I'm, I'm Sicilian, I'm, I'm Sweden, I'm from Nor Nor Norway, like, oh, like, he doesn't really know, he doesn't really fit to know where, and suddenly he loves the Bible. Like suddenly he wants to understand the original Hebrew texts, and he doesn't want to count anymore on the English translation to the, for the Bible. Like, why? It's true, it's good. You're going to understand that you've been lied to for years because no one ever taught you the source, and you don't know how many things have been changed in the different um, translations. And you should learn the source, and it's important. But why? Because that you don't need to tell a thirsty person to go to look for water. He knows it. 
he feels it. Those souls that are seeking for the truth, those souls that are seeking for a connection, those souls that are seeking to find meaning for their lives, those are souls that meaning and truth and the Bible and faith belongs to them. They are meaningful souls. Those are divine souls. Those are amazing spirits that are coming from very high and important places in heaven. Their roots are very holy and therefore they're seeking for meaningful life. Or else they wouldn't seek for it. A person that doesn't care about those things, his mind is on different things, that's his life. He's got simple life, he wants to work, he's happy, food, whatever, TV, baseball, football, great. And like he's satisfied, overwhelmed from the finals, like, oh, that's it, he's so happy. If that's the meaning of his life, you cannot expect from him for more. Even if you're going to stand for years rebuking him that what, that's what you do with your life, you're not going to help him with that. If his spirit is finding satisfaction from, from the finals, from, from the, I don't know what, how they, I, like, I, I don't even know the names of those like nonsense, sorry for, like I don't know, like the Super Bowl, oh, no, no, okay, ding, ring the bell, okay. Like, if you find the true satisfaction, meaning for your life in that, like, no one can wake you up. Like, only if you're going to wake up from within. Like, and if you woke up from within, so it's time for you to start asking questions. Now, the Creator, he's like, I, I won't say that he puts the effort, but like, in 100% we can see that he's hiding from us. Like, people are praying and people are putting so much effort. Like, what's going on? Like, why? Why those truth seekers, amazing people, we just described them, amazing noble souls, people that are able to fight against all the rules of nature, that are, 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 are arguing and confronting families and society and, and workplaces and like coming and battling and fighting for the truth. And when they're standing and praying, they're not being answered. Like, it's frustrating. What's going on? You can create, oh, please, Father in Heaven. Why aren't you helping to th those ones that are calling you? And especially when they're calling you with truth. I'm going to ask you, who needs to hide? Who needs to hide? Who needs to hide in this world? If there is someone over there, far, far away from us, on the mountain, he's over there, does he need to hide from us? He doesn't need to hide. You can't see him anyway. When he's far, you don't need to look for him. You don't, he doesn't need to fight. He doesn't need to hide. Why doesn't he need to hide? Because he's already there. But when he needs to hide, when you're close. When you're close to him and you're about to find him, then he must hide. And this is exactly what that goes on in our generation, that the Creator is hiding from the truth seekers. Like in earlier generations, the truth seekers, they could find Hashem. For them, it was easy to find Hashem. They would go to the forest, they would go to the, to, to the, to the fields, they would go to the synagogues, and they would learn, and they would dedicate their lives to the Torah, and they would find Him. They would enjoy huge spiritual illuminations, like light would come down from heaven and surrounding them and, and, and shining them, and they would, would see and visualize amazing lights and deep understandings. Today, in our generation, you can scream to heaven and nothing moves. Like you can turn the sky, literally you can, you can move clouds to the sides with your prayers and nothing moves, like nothing changes. You can see some spark, immediately it disappears. It melts between our fingers. And why is it happening? Because we are so close to our salvation. Because we are so close to the complete redemption. And the complete redemption must include everyone. So for that, the truth seekers must be in the complete darkness. And separated between all the millions of people. That when the Creator will collect them finally, He will gather everyone else with them. And every one of us, we have that role, we have that job to become a lighthouse to our surroundings. And that's the mission of our lives. And you cannot change, and you're not supposed to change. You just need to shine from your place, from your position. You must prepare the vessels for the complete redemption, because in the last redemption, the house of Hashem will be called the house of prayer to all nations. And that's the most important thing for us to understand. 
all the nations will join together as one. Not only the nation of Israel, even though that we can speak for hours on the greatness of Israel and on the greatness and their role in their path of, of, for, or for redemption, whatever, we can speak, we can talk, we can see whatever we want. In reality, the bottom line is that the redemption will take place in the lives of the whole wide world. Even the animals will be redeemed, like that the prophet said, that animals will live in peace and harmony. There will be no more death. The resurrection of the dead will take place in the lives of all the nations. All the souls, all the spirits will rise back and will stand to trial. And it will be a trial with no judgments. All the darkness already going to disappear from the illumination of the Creator. When the Creator greatness and beauty and grace will be revealed to the world, the darkness will just vanish, will disappear. It will be part of the past. You, you you won't look back. The glory and the beauty of the redemption that will take place that from four wings of the universe people will wake up to desire Him, to the desire the one that revealed Himself already, that will be our place. We will be aware to the fact that a huge awakeness already took place, that a huge shift already happened. That the world is not the same. And then people will go out from their tents, from their houses, from their villas, from their, from their castles, from their cabins, from, in every state, from every city, from every village. Everyone will walk together. And that's going to be the journey, the final journey, to see the face of the Lord, of the Creator, of our Father in Heaven, of Hashem, of everyone will call Him in His name. Everyone will know that it's Him. Everyone will understand the story. Everyone's awareness and mind will grasp finally the complete picture. Everyone will get the result of the 6,000 years journey from time of creation till today. Everyone will know it. Every child will understand it. Every person. And not only us. Also the earlier generations. Everyone will wake up back to life life. It's called the resurrection of the dead. All the dead will come up back from their graves. The happiness and the joy and the, the satisfaction, the celebrations in the streets. We're talking about a great festival that will take place in the whole wide world. That will be the reality of that day, of the day of redemption. Every person with an instrument, everyone that knows how to play, will hit the streets with music. Everyone that knows to move and feel the vibe and the flow in his, in his body will dance. Like you're going to see all the beauty of all nature, of all creation reflects godliness. The super, the super beauty of, of, of our beloved Father in heaven. All the creation will praise Him. All the animals, you're going to see billions of birds flying in shapes, in, in, in crazy ways in the skies. You're going to see colors that you didn't realize that exist. All the flowers will bloom to the right direction. Everything will go in that move. And everyone will go to the holy city of Jerusalem. Everyone will go to Mount Zion. Everyone. The guys from Jamaica and the guys from Afghanistan. And the guys in Japan and the guys in Ireland. Everyone will go to that holy land. To the promised land. And the truth will be clarified to all. Everyone will recognize it. Everyone will see it. It will be clear. Everyone will know exactly who the real Messiah is. And everyone will know exactly who are the chosen ones. Everyone will know. There will be no more arguments about it. All the lie will fall and collapse. And everyone will know exactly that they went in the wrong direction and that they've been misguided and misthought and they will change and they will make tshuva, they will atone, they will ask forgiveness. Everyone, 
from that sight of the glory and the beauty and the grace of the Almighty, everyone will wake up to recognize the truth and their mistakes, and they will throw away their idols that they were worshipping for so long, if it was their look, if it was their money, if it was their cars, if it was their I don't know what, and they will just throw it behind their backs and will apologize to the Father of all and going to ask for forgiveness and for a new opportunity, and it will be given to all to all those ones that their heart is passionate to the truth, to all those ones that are calling Him with truth. Because the Creator is close to everyone who calls Him with truth. And if you have truth inside of you, you don't need to be Jewish to be redeemed, you don't need to be Israeli to be redeemed, you just need to be that person that is seeking for truth. And you are already included in that redemption. If the deers, if the sheep, if the goats, if the animals will be redeemed, so you, because you're not Jewish, you're not going to be redeemed? Only Jewish? It's crazy! That's not the plan for the last redemption, only Jews. No, that's not the plan. The Jews might serve in the temple. The Jews might welcome everyone. They might be able to teach the language. They might teach many amazing things. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. They will have the merit to guide and to teach and to help and to assist. Wonderful. To know to who? To all the lost tribes. To amazing lost, ten lost tribes that are walking and wandering today in the deserts of our reality. In today's world, you have ten tribes, lost tribes, the children of Jacob and his four wives, the holy tribes, they're lost. They're lost between the nations. Where are they? Mashiach, the real Messiah, he will walk and gather them. He will call them. How are we going to call them? He going to recognize them? No, he going to call people. He going to call everyone to wake up to believe in their own self faith and belief system means you believe in something in what you believe. You believe that the world's supposed to be good? Yes, you need to go for that. You need you believe that justice must come? You need to fight for that. You believe that you must let your talents shown? You need to go with that. You believe that you need to learn the Bible? You need to go with that. You believe that you must learn how to play the piano because you must make music? You must go with that. Because those are the gifts, those are the treasures that have been given to you by your Creator. There is one Creator and He created us as individuals. And He gave each and every one of us a gift, a tool for us to work with, to use, to show His godliness out to the world, to reveal the beauty, the spiritual beauty, our true potential to the wide world. And we need to believe in what that we received. In the beauty of the treasures, in the talents, in the qualities that have been given to us. You know yourself that you have a certain sense, that you have a certain flavor, that you have a certain understanding, that you have a certain sensitivity, that you have a sense of humor, that you have a way to communicate with people, that you have a look, that you have money, that you have an amazing phenomenon, memory, something you know what you have, right? Even if it's a crazy, silly understanding standing in chocolate bars. I don't know what. There is a use for that. You know when there's going to be a use for that? In the meal. In the feast. You know what's going to happen in Jerusalem when the redemption will take place? Everyone will come to dine, to eat. There's going to be a celebration. There are going to be millions of tables and all those tables will serve amazing food that been cooked by the best chefs. Which chefs? Heavenly chefs? No, those people that today are so crazy, cannot leave their kitchens, cannot stop watching cooking shows on TV. Those poor guys that are suffering badly today because every piece of steak costs so much money, they will have the best source of all kinds of food to prepare and to make the most fantastic, amazing, delicious meal to all nations that will come to the temple to see the face of God. All your talents, all your skills, all your abilities will be used. 
If you love to build, you will build for the sake of the redemption. If you like to drive, you're going to drive your truck or your motorcycle. You're going to enjoy, your hobbies will be used. People will enjoy your talents and you will enjoy others. And that's the secret of redemption. That all the glory, that all the beauty, that all the amazing wisdom that is so hidden today, where is it hidden? Under the layers of fear, of the low self-esteem of ours, that you're so scared to say, yes, that's who I am. Yes, that's my opinion, and I want to fight for that. And you're scared to do that. You're afraid what people will say, how the community going to react, what your parents will have to say. They passed away 10 years ago, and you're still scared what they're going to say about you in heaven. Crazy life we're living, terrorized by society. Our own fears and anxieties are holding us down from revealing the amazing, magnificent beauty that's been treasured inside of us, our true potential. And even if your true potential is to break dance, you're going to use that in the time of redemption because there are people that when they see others break dance, they are amazed. For them, it's the best show in the world. They love it. Like they can enjoy those shows for hours. And you're going to dance and they're going to enjoy your show. And that's going to be their path and your path to the redemption for that amazing feast that millions of people will come to dine and to eat and to accept the face of the Creator. And there are people that likes to help and there are people that likes to assist and there are people that likes to paint. There are people that likes to do whatever. Everyone will do his thing. Everyone will do his thing. And from all the past, from all the stories of our ancestors, from all the stories in the Bible, from all the prophets, from all the miracles that we heard of in different generations, from all those things we must take, we must take the lesson that it's all about to come back in our present time, in the future. But the future will be experienced by us in the present time. It's not happening right now. It will happen, let's say, tomorrow, let's say in a month from now, in a year from now, when Mashiach will reveal himself, when Mashiach will convince the Creator to pull himself out of his hidden place. And when that moment will take place, all of what we heard from earlier generation will come back to reality, will come back to our lives means that if Moses was able to open the sea back then, 3,000 years ago, for the nation of Israel, for the sake of saving them from the Egyptians that went to kill them, the sea will be opened again, but not only for Am Israel, not only by Moses. For every person, you know how you can tell that it's reality? If you're going to go and watch the movie Moana, you saw Moana? No, you didn't saw the movie Moana? You must see it. It's a cartoon. It's an amazing movie. And when she's walking toward the ocean, the ocean is open for her. Exactly. And it's a cartoon. By, but it's a cartoon that is telling a legend of a certain nation. Of a certain nation that has their tales, that have their stories, and they're waiting for their redemption as well. And when it will take place... Their redemption, like we said, the redemption for the whole wide world. So all the legends will come back to reality. And not only the sea, the Red Sea will be open for Moses and his people. Also, the Jordan River was open a few times. It was open for all of Am Israel when they came with Yeshua Binun to enter to the Holy Land. The Jordan River went to the sides. And when Elijah the prophet crossed the river, the water moved to the side. And when Elisha, his student, went that same way back to the Holy Land, so from that place, the sea, the, 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 the Jordan River, River opened again. So we see that the Jordan River is open in many occasions, in many situations. And you also have different stories and different righteous people that had miracles on the water, that the water made miracles for them. So in our tradition, we have recollection for this kind of miracles. And in different cultures, you have recollection for miracles from that kind, only because the, the Creator does not stop from revealing the true potential of His creation. 
that all of the creation is not surrendered to nature, just to the Creator, that He runs the nature. That He Himself control all the particles as one, under His hand, forced to His will. But as for now, He's still hiding. And we need to pull Him out from that darkness. And where is He hiding? Like we said, Betoch ami anochi yashavet. Inside my people, I live, I sit, I stay. The Creator is inside of you. The godly portion of heaven, that it's your soul, the elo neshama elokit, the godly portion, your soul, the godly soul that lives inside of you, life itself, your life, is the Creator's light that is channeled from your within, from your inside, out to the world. And when you talk, your spirit is being revealed. And when you sing, your spirit is shining. And when you think, and when you play, and when you talk, and when you create, and when you work, the Creator works through you and using you to reveal His godliness. To reveal the qualities that He treasured inside of you for you to reveal. For you to open up to the world. One person cannot do all the job. He doesn't know all the languages. He cannot write all the books that will be enough for all the people to wake up. He cannot make all the television shows that will be needed for the redemption. You can imagine to yourself today, you have millions of people that are addicted to the screens. They're not able to function without their mobiles, without their laptops, without their computers, without a huge screen TV in their house, they can't function, they become asthmatic, they lose their mind, like, whoa, what's going on, <laughs> like, what's going on, like, no, no, nothing, no smartphone, nothing moves, like, you can't open, you can't, like, he cannot, like, once people would play with their Zippo lighter, people would have, like, simple games, like, today, like, who, that, no, like, you have an app to light your cigarette, like, you have electronic cigarette, you don't need lighter, even, like, in reality, everything is electronic today. You think that in the redemption there will be no screens? Do you know how much work and how much art all those videographers and all those people that are editing videos, all those people that works daily on communication and, and making all the, all, the, all the TV and all the movies, do you know how much they will create in the time of redemption? Can you imagine the commercials? Can you imagine to yourself all the, all the trailers, all the news, all the amazing highlights, all the the street signs, all, everything will function exactly as usual. Olam kemin hagon oheg, the world will run exactly like it runs today, but with a different tune, with a different direction, aimed only to the purpose, to reveal the true potential of every individual. And for that, our war is only one, to fight against the evil inclination. How? What are we going to do? Who we should kill? Who we should shoot? What we need to fight with? Your low self-esteem. That one that is breaking your Holy Spirit from shining. That one that is depressing you and breaking you to pieces. That is downgrading you in your own eyes. That one that is telling you that you're not worth it. That your prayers are not important. That you are worthless and hopeless. And that there is no cure to your sickness. And that there is no one that can help you. And no one will redeem you. And that you're not part of the redemption. And you're not part of Am Israel. And you're not part of the Jewish. And you're not part of the community. And you didn't woke up early enough in the morning. Oh! All the complaints, all the criticism, the criticism, all the negativity, all the sadness, all the bad attributes that are blocking our vision. All that darkness is your enemy. And you need to kill it. And to become the most happiest person in the world. That's what you need to do. That's your mission. Because when you're happy, and happy doesn't mean you need to go and jump on cars. If you like to jump on cars and dance, great, do that. No problem. If that's your joy, go celebrate. But not on my car. No, I'm kidding. You can come. No. I mean that every person should find his own completion. In his own way. It doesn't have to be a celebration dancing in the streets. If your happiness is to sit 
come and relax in your own house and to breathe and to meditate and to read a nice book and to eat a nice supper and that's your happiness, that's your joy, that's your satisfaction for tonight, for this evening. That's exactly what you need to do and you need to believe that the Creator enjoys and satisfies from your work. And I'll tell you how. Because we don't see the links. We don't see the ties. We don't see the backstage of our reality. But when you eat something, let's say that now an, a, a parent in a family, he works all day long, yes? And he, brought, he brings money for the family. That's what he's working for. And when he comes at evening, he sees his child going to the fridge takes an apple, wash it, and just bite it. And just enjoy the fruit. What does it make? What does it do? How it affect the parent? Just to see that your child is able to bite an apple when he desires to do that, it gives you the strength to wake up tomorrow at 5 a.m. and to go and work like a slave for hours in the furthest places of them all to catch the earlier flight or to go on the train or to be stuck in the subway and to sacrifice your days, your weeks, your months, your years, your life. For that satisfaction of one moment that you're able to see that your child can take a bite from an apple and enjoy it. And when you are enjoying your supper and you're sitting alone in your room and you're fine and you're okay and you're just spending your time in comfort, in joy, in simple satisfaction from life. The Creator receives the biggest pleasure from that. And it gives Him the motivation to give you more, to give us more. And when we recognize that it's coming from Him, when we're recognizing that all the beauty, that all the sweetness, that all the joy, that all the satisfaction is coming from somewhere, and we're not falling to the imagination like, I created my life. I may. You don't know how to create the flavor of an apple. You don't know how to make the best song in the world. You know how to, to push the button that it will play, hopefully, right? Like, sometimes you need help with that as well. Like, in reality, you don't know how to create, but you know how to enjoy. So when you enjoy something, you should recognize that there is a source for it. You should appreciate the singer that sang that song, and you should appreciate the Creator for giving the life, the inspiration, the, 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 the light into that person, into that artist, into that musician, into that cook, into that amazing person that designed the table, that built the house, to have gratitude. Gratitude is the connection to the truth, to reality. Someone else built that table. Someone else built that phone. Someone else built those walls. You should have gratitude. You, by having gratitude, can recognize where things really begins. Also, the person that created that phone, he's not the beginning. Also, the person that built that house, he's not the beginner. It began very early, earlier, like in ancient days. And then you can recognize the Creator. When you look straight into the reality of things, I'm not the boss, I'm not the cook, I'm not the chef, I'm not the center of the world. I am just here now to experience. And my experience, my joy, my satisfaction, built and established on other people's talents, on other people's blessing. And they've been blessed by their parents, they've been blessed by their communities, they've been blessed by their ancestors. And all the ancestors started from Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve also, they didn't came out from the blue. The Creator created them. He gave them a body. He planted a soul inside their forms, inside their figures. And that soul is passing from one generation to the next. And that soul is our soul as well. When you look into the core of things, you can recognize your true nature and to understand who you really are. And when you understand who you are spiritually, from the spiritual side of your life, you can connect yourself to your true identity, to your true potential, and there you can start pull huge tons amounts of bounty to the world for people really to be saved by you. To people really to learn some lesson by you. 
to people really to enjoy the blessing that has been given to you by the Creator. And when the Creator sees that we're using the power that we received from Him for that cause, like we said before, it wakes up the desire of Him to give, to come out from His hidden place. The reason why the Creator decided to hide Himself from us in the first place, in the first destruction, in the second destruction of the Holy Temple was only because that we were ungrateful, that we forgot where all the bounty came from. After He took us out of Egypt, we forgot about Him. We started having our own needs and we didn't connect to the fact that we're eating with the provider. We didn't recognize the fact that someone is taking care of us. We just wanted more. And we start forgetting where all the good things are coming from. And therefore the Creator said, if you're managing and things are going on well for you, so I can go to my own business, to my own thing. The Creator is a soul. He can feel. He sense as well. The Creator, when someone doesn't care about Him, He understands. He is humble. He backs off. He doesn't push. And we pushed Him so badly in earlier generations. Not specifically you, me, I, yeah, whatever. No. The reality of the generations, human beings, with their lusts and desires and angers and all their bad attributes, our bad attributes, with our furious anger and hatred and jealousy and all the bad things that we can forget the Creator for the sake of our needs, our desires, our lusts, when we're throwing Him behind our back, so there we're losing Him. And for us to bring Him back, for that we need to call Him. And the way to call Him is to call Him with truth. To recognize the truth. And to call Him from that point of truth. And to tell Him, listen, we want you to come back. Like, we want to spend our lives together. We want to spend it with you. We want you to show your power. We want to respect you for your beauty, for your goodness. We want to live life of joy, in harmony. We don't want to fight no more. We don't want to argue no more. We don't want to rebuke no one. We don't want to, we don't want to fight. We want peace. We want to live together. Simple prayers like that. Simple conversations like that. That you will run from your own apartment, from your own chamber, from your own room, from your own house, from your own porch, from your own car while driving, finishing the 20 minutes Kabbalah on the highway, and now you can talk to Hashem. Talk to Him. Talk to him like you talk to your best friend. Talk to him in the most honest and simple way that you're able to talk. Tell him we miss you. We need you. I apologize if I hurt you. And I'm calling you to come back. And we need you. And there are many people that need you. That needs a salvation. That need healing. That need financial need support. Need money. Need roofs above their, their heads. Need houses. People need cures, people need medicines, people need water. There are people that are thirsty to physical water. People are, are, are suffering from drought. People are suffering from plagues. The Creator, we need you for ourselves, for me, for my family, for our communities, for, for, for our nations, and for different nations. There are children over there that are so sick, that are in, in hospitals, in children hospitals. Thousands and millions of kids are sick. And we need to wake up and to call the Creator and to ask for Him to come back in the most simple way of them all, no matter who you are. Because you anyway don't know your true identity. You yourself don't recognize who you are. You don't know the real nature of your soul. You don't know from which source, from which branch, of which family you're coming. You don't know if you're Israeli or not. You don't really know if you're Jewish or not. You don't know if you're holy or not. You don't have a clue about yourself. You don't know who you were in different lifetimes. You don't know. You don't know if you, maybe you were Napoleon in a different lifetime. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You don't have a clue. Maybe you were righteous, maybe you were a Tana and Amora. Maybe you don't know, you don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. Maybe you're second time in this world, maybe you're 30 time in this world. Maybe you were Native American and you were a Bedouin in, in, in Syria. You don't know, you don't have a clue. You were a man, a female, a woman, and you're like, you don't have a clue who you are. You don't know anything about yourself. But when you will connect yourself to your inside, 
to your soul, you will start to sense. You will start to understand things about yourself. And that knowledge will be revealed to those ones that will walk with a simple prayer, with a simple request of honest words, just talking from the heart, telling the Creator your real needs, your real desires, your real hopes, your real expectations from life. Please, I need that. Please, we need that. Please, the Creator, look. You see a sick person, it's for a reason. You see a weak person, you see a broken couple, you see a broken house. There is a purpose for that, for you to wake up for something. So wake up. Use that awakeness, use that thought that came, that crossed your mind to pray, to ask for salvation for poor people, for homeless people, for nations, for groups, for individuals, for yourself, for your children, for your family. Honest prayers are the prayers that are opening the skies for salvation. Only those prayers that are calling the Creator to come out of His hidden place, to play His role above the rules of nature. The, rule, the numeral value of the word nature in the ancient, the holy language of Hebrew is equal to the numeral value of the word Elohim. It's the same, God and the nature is the same numeral value. It's the same, it, it's, it's equal. Means that when you don't understand, you see the nature but when you understand, you see that it's all by God. So you can be stuck in nature. Oh no, I must do this, I must do that, or else whatever is going to happen, things might happen, coincidence and like things, and people, and he can call, and I don't know what he's going to do. Or that you go out of that matrix, and you understand that it's all supervised, and that there is a creator behind the scene that is running the show. And when you pray, you should call him. You should call the backstage. You should call the honor. You should call the creator. You should call the one that controls it all. And to ask him to reveal his glory, to reveal his beauty, his greatness out to the world and to redeem us all as one. Amen. Can you hear us on? Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com.